Hello everyone and welcome to Upside Down. Today we are going to talk about UE4 level design, especially for massive open world maps. A couple of months ago I made a video about how to create a massive open world inside Unreal Engine 4 and ever since that video I've been receiving a lot of questions about open world maps. Today I summarized a short video with three key points that you need to keep in mind when developing big maps. I'm going to talk from my personal experience while developing the map from Omni. This was a personal project that I worked a couple of years ago, but never released. So now, without further ado, let's jump into the video. First thing, when I started doing this map, and this was uh, a mistake that uh, I did and I had to think a little bit more when uh, I started it, but for me, this was the first uh, open world map that I worked on. Before that, I worked on games that, uh, like even from AAA games, that uh, were either linear or the arena itself was uh, not anyhow connected to the other levels or just story-wise it was connected. But when you're working for an open world game, you need to have in mind that uh, the zones and everything not only need to be linked, but also players, they are going to be able to go absolutely everywhere. Uh, maybe if you have some restricted areas, of course not, uh, but uh, in general, if you have a zone where people can walk around, then uh, they'll be able to go there. So uh, how I started designing it initially was actually, uh, I had in mind just this zone over here. I already knew what kind of uh, zones I want to have in uh, the whole map, but I really didn't know where exactly they need to be placed. So this created two problems. First, um, as I said, I knew kind of what I wanted to do, what uh, kind of uh, zones. So this uh, was useful because I already could start planning some of the assets. But by not knowing where exactly everything is going to be placed as a zone, uh, I ran into the following problem. I started working on this area over here, but I didn't have any of the topography of uh, the rest of the map. So my first tip is going to be before you start placing any assets and before you start building any cities or anything like that, what you need to do is first nail the terrain of your map. So you can create something which is not maybe the final version of your terrain, but at least if you know already that, okay, this is going to be an area where we need to be uh, more flat, then we need to have some mountains. Uh, after that, we'll be going into a desert and uh, then here is going to be a seaside and so on and so on. So even if it's not like completely polished, start from building your terrain. Like before you have your terrain and kind of where your zones are spread, don't go into creating assets. It's something that, for example, for me, if I had to start all over again, I could save easily a month or two into just following this tip alone. I mentioned that when you are doing, of course, your terrain and when you are developing your map, it's not going to be a final one, of course. So you are going to do some iterations. And this is bringing me to my second tip. So I know that we are artists and we would like to make the best art, we want to spend time in polishing some small zone and making it as interesting as possible and also to have uh, the best possible design and uh, view and shapes and colors and everything. But uh, as artists, I would say that it's important as well not only to spend time in uh, doing those small art things because there are few things that are happening when you are spending too much time in one zone. And first of all, is going to be that you kind of get a little bit tired of it. So you start either making some mistakes or uh, your creativity level just drops completely. And the second thing, which also is going to be very beneficial as an artist is if you start being interested as well from a little bit more technical things. I'm not talking, of course, about you writing code or writing some very specific tools or something uh, which is extending the functionality in Unreal, but being able to create your own small tools for Unreal, especially if you're building an open world map, is going to be a great thing for you. Because one of the things that uh, I did in the very beginning was exactly as I mentioned, I started building some of the areas and making them 
as pretty as possible. So I wanted to add some grass here, then I wanted to add some rocks there, but also I wanted the path where the character can pass to be interesting and not to be just straightforward and also to have like different places where characters can follow and go. And this whole thing was giving me a very fast result in terms of visual stimulation. So I was getting and seeing uh, very pretty pictures and uh, some nice places already done in a couple of days. I spent probably more than a month in uh, working on this zone over here, plus this zone over here and this passage where you can pass and go a little bit more like a forest and then you end up being over here where you have like a cave and you have another small city like station. So I spent probably about a month doing this uh, whole area and it was because every time that I had to make some change because for example it was too small for the character or it didn't fit the gameplay purpose or I created some new assets and I wanted to put them somewhere in, in the zone. I had to make those changes and go back and uh, make those iterations and this was every time taking me more more time and uh, every time becoming more complex because there were already more assets. So instead what you should do in the very beginning is work on tools. As I said no need to do very complex tools but one tool that you can do and it's pretty easy it's going to be for your grass placement. So what you can do is create a system when you are doing your materials for the terrain, which is going to automatically place grass and also if you have some small rocks and other things that you want to scatter, those as well can be scattered automatically based on the terrain material. So this way, when you are changing, for example, the road or you are changing some area or you are moving some trees or rocks around, then the terrain material and where small vegetation is being scattered is going to be automatically placed and adjusted according to that. Let me just open Photoshop and I will tell you a little bit more about, for example, how my tool works and something which is very easy and might help your project work a little bit better and everything to be a little bit more consistent. So why I wanted to open Photoshop was uh, just so that I can make a very quick sketch. Don't judge me, it's uh, not going to be something very pretty, but I think it's going to be a little bit easier to explain how exactly the tool that I made works. So uh, first thing, you have different materials. So you have uh, each different material. For example, you have something which uh, is supposed to have grass. So the one with grass, of course, is going to have grass on it. Then you can have like a very short grass, another type, which is not going to have any grass on it. And of course, we're going to have like power pads and so on and so on and so on. This is the first layer of the tool. But then comes another layer, which is going to check, for example, if you have a tree, let's say, or maybe you have like a, some big rock. So once you have a tree somewhere placed, then it's going to scatter some small grass around it and also some small vegetation. So in, in nature, how, how things work is, uh, for example, let's say you have some slope and then you have a rock over here. And then maybe you have, let's say, some small tree or something like this, which is going up over here. So in nature, you are going to have some grass and some other small things, like, for example, some small rocks that are being scattered around here. And then you have the slope, which doesn't make any sense to have anything in this area over here, but then you can have some small rocks and things scattered on the bottom of it. And then of course it's going to blend into like having some small other vegetation like grass and so on around our tree. So I started working on this tool. It took me about two weeks to make uh, almost all the functionality. I actually added up a little bit later, a few other cases like, uh, like for example for slopes and as well for scattering in some uh, other area around some other assets. But overall it took me around two weeks. And if I made this tool in the very beginning, it was going to save me a lot of time. So this way I managed to do a lot more iterations and a lot more changes into my layout and terrain for future without the need of spending and going every time back. If you would like me to make a video on how I created the tool and how it works, I can make a video on something very similar so that you also can start learning and using such techniques. And my third tip, which I'm going to talk about today, is going to be how you're planning your assets. 
In my case, as I mentioned, I already knew what zones I would like to have. So I had already in mind what exactly I would like to create as assets. So I very quickly started building some of them, some of the modular ones and uh, then additional ones, which are going to add a little bit more detail. The thing that I didn't plan for the assets is how exactly those assets are going to be packed. On almost all the game projects that I worked before, the arenas or levels that I worked were going to be closed. So this meant that uh, even if you add a lot of details, it's still not going to be to the level of an open world map. So I started developing some modular kits and as well some other assets. Actually, this walls here, these wooden planks, this was one of the first assets that I created. I decided that uh, I need to start by making those uh, walls and then I made some other things kind of to fix the same universe and uh, idea. And later I ran into the following problem. I actually already had created a lot of different elements, but a lot of them were into a completely unique texture set or as well where they could have shared a lot fewer textures. So my mistake here was that I didn't plant my assets ahead and I run into some optimization problems. This is something that I would say that it's uh, kind of inevitable and uh, at some point you will need to go back and repack some of the assets. But overall, if I can save you some time, do the following. If you want to create some modular kits, try to use more trim sheets and as well tileable textures that can be shared in between. And then for everything else, like small objects like this, don't try to make them into unique textures. If you can use some trim sheets, go for that as well. But for the rest, try to pack the textures in a logical way. So for example, we have these barrels. These barrels are all in one texture because it's logical that when I'm placing one barrel somewhere, I might have some of the other type of barrels and dressing which is made for those around them. So then when I'm walking with my character over here, the engine is going to load that texture and it's not going to load another 10 or 20 different type of textures. And as well, when I'm walking out from it, it's going to unload one texture from the memory. It seems like a very small thing, but trust me, when it comes to open world maps and huge maps like this, it's something which adds up very fast and you can run out of memory very quickly. So plan ahead all of the assets and all the optimizations that you would like to do. And this way you're going to be able to create more art and as well, you're going to add more detail into your maps. If you would like to make me more videos on the topic of open world maps and open world games, then leave a like and a comment down below. Thank you for joining me in today's video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and see you next time.